If you need to pick a universal moment rather than a time, you have to go with zone date time. The zone date time is a class in the Java date and time API that represents a date and a time with a time zone. It is also part of the Java time package, like the others. Let's move over to IntelliJ and see various ways of creating a zone date time. So I'm going to create a class for it. And what you may have noticed is that I prefixed them all with example. And well, I could have gone for more creative things, of course, but what's important for you is that you need to be careful that you don't use the exact name a Java does for your class, because then things can get tricky. Java might think that you're actually trying to create an instance of your own class and you complain to me, hey, these methods are not available for me, but you're looking at your own class. So always make sure to call your own classes not the exact same thing as the Java ones. All right, back to what I was actually doing, and that's creating some zoned date times. Of course, we can create one using the zoned date time now method. So I'm going to go ahead and say zoned date time now. And this way, I'm creating a zoned date time with the very instance of right now. And then it might not surprise you, but we could also use the off method. But this is where things are somewhat different, though, because for the off, well, I have a bunch of options. I can specify a local date time or a local date, a local time, etc. But what I would need to add in all of these cases is the actual zone ID that I'm using right here. So let's go ahead and specify the uh, local date time of now here as an input. Let's say local date time now. Then the next argument would be the zone ID. And there's actually different ways of grabbing a zone ID. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll just use um, Europe Paris for this. And of course, we also need to import zone ID. So that's why it's showing up in red right now. And of course, we could also parse them, but I'll show that later. If you want to see which zone IDs are available, you can actually ask Java, and here's how to do that. I'm just going to use the for each loop, and I'm going to say print every string zone ID that we're having on my system. We get available zone IDs. There we go. And I'll print them here. So I'll run this code and we'll see all the zone IDs. And please mind you, there are a lot of them. You can see them right here. And you can see on the scroll bar on the very right that this is a long, long list. So if you which zone ID to use, you can also look them up in this very list. All right, so that's how to get all the zone ideas. And of course, there's also methods on the zone date time object. You can use these built-in methods to do all sorts of things with zone date times. I just want to demonstrate a few that we're having. So just like for the others, we can use the gets to get a part of the zone date time. Well, since the zone date time has a lot of parts, there's a lot of gets. We can get the zone, the hour, day of the month, week, year, etc. We can also use the minus method. And of course, this will not alter the original zone date time, but it will just create a new one with the updated zone date time in there. And we can also do something very similar for plus, and this will not alter the original object. There are two that I would like to say something about. And the first is this one. So I'm going to create a new zone date time, ZDT3, using ZDT1. And I'm going to use the width zone same instant. And what this method is going to do is going to return a new zone date time object with the same date and same time as my ZDT1, but with a new time zone. So I can specify a new time zone here. So, and I remember seeing Egypt as a time zone. So I'd go ahead and set zone ID of, and then specify Egypt like this. And then I can go ahead 
and print the result right here. And as you can see, we get the updated time, but now for Egypt time, which is a little bit ahead of me. At this point, it will probably not surprise you that there are more of them, but we've seen enough methods for now. In the next video, we're going to have a look at duration and period. This will help us to express amounts of time in Java.